Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Let's do Doctor. Alright, Doctor, Doctor, let's try it. <laughs> uh, there's so many cards from the Doctor deck I haven't opened yet, but we keep getting Speaker of the Heavens. Well, maybe we'll get to make some Angels this time. This is not a great hand, but a keepable one. Yeah, I guess I might as well revitalize here. Maybe I should take heart instead, but take heart's cheaper to play later. All my creatures already have lifelink, so this seems fine. Opponent with two devotees, but they must be from Two different decks, Spooky and Minions, I believe. Yeah, let's attack. Still doesn't have the mana to use the Cauldron. Although it is holding priority, so maybe they've got their own trick. Village rights. All right, fair enough. Shambling Goblin. That lines up pretty well against our uh, Corster. Until we play the Acolyte, that is. Yeah, as much as I want to get more value from the Acolyte, if I wait, they can use Cauldron with the Goblin to take out the Corster, which is just not acceptable. And then... don't really want to attack. Interesting. What's the plan here? I see. Innocent blood. Still kind of a weird play. Yeah, I guess I'll keep the Corster here. Ooh, a light of promise. Yeah, let's go for it. This is going to be pretty chunky Corster. That's too bad. A 
let's see. Tap one dark creature. Free life gain. If we draw one of our two rares, we can start making angels. Ooh. The ghoul color is here. I could also use Fate's Feathers on the different artifacts here to remove the activated ability. Which is kind of interesting. Because if I Fate's Feathers the Ghoul Caller, they can just sack it to the Cauldron and I don't get a ton of value. Maybe I can Swift Response. So the question really is, do I Fate's Feathers the Cauldron or the Scythe? I guess we don't care about Scythe when we have double Swift Response in hand, so maybe it is Cauldron. It's kind of a strange play. That's a pretty sad Acolyte. Do I even play it here? Opponent's still at 19. This is not going to go the distance. I'll wait. Alright, so don't really have any good attacks, do I? We do have an enchantment, but they can still pretty easily uh, block with a bone picker. So we're kind of just chilling. Taskmaster is going to get some value. Yeah, this is going to be tough. They might move the scythe somewhere else. I don't think I care about the 5 damage. Could matter if we draw one of our 1 drops. But I think I'm going to take it. The 1 counter on scythe is definitely going to start adding up. Yeah, this is not going according to plan. And there's a speaker. But now it's too little, too late. Yeah, the damage has been done. Interesting that they didn't move the scythe. It's 
Still a little bit short of activating speaker. I guess if I draw land, I could activate Chorister twice in the same turn. Oh no, they're reading the Corster. The jig is up. They can deny the life gain with the Cauldron because of the Fates Feathers. Maybe I should have sent the Acolyte too so I could start making angels. All right, Brightmare. That's uh, a nice draw. Is this uh, the start of a comeback? I guess it's already kind of happening. Make our first angel. Take six. Gourmand was a nice one. Secure the scenes, a nice one too. So I can still pump out an angel with speaker. I could also exile the scythe. Which could be the play. If I secure the bone picker, I still can't really attack with the Corister. So either way, I'm probably not making too many attacks here. Yeah, I'm fine getting rid of the scythe. And the Grinner. There's probably no downside to trading. Now the Chorister can attack again. And we'll start making griffins besides angels. Yeah, I think long term shutting down the cauldron did benefit us. Still okay sending in the Corster. Not quite at the point where I want to send in the Angels, but we're getting close. Just gain the maximum amount of life.
Our opponent already cast a Languish earlier, so that's not a concern anymore. Opponent's at 15, they've got one Flying Blocker. Yeah, let's get in there. Alright, sweet. Well, that was quite a turnaround. Looked like we were in a lot of trouble. But uh, yeah, the double pump on Corister saved us. Another Itali to add to the collection. I think that's the fifth one now. Yeah, I guess there's a couple okay cars in Predatory that I don't have yet. Or at least not a full playset. Double Predatory, Predatory plus one, or Predatory Spirits. Predatory does have some plus one counter synergies to go with plus one, but I'm guessing double Predatory is going to be even more synergistic. We open two different packs. I've got a Nath. And our other rare is Thraktusk, which I did already have a playset since I crafted it. But definitely a powerful and fun card. Double Crushing Canopy, not really the most exciting, but it does have its moments. Alright, so it's kind of a green beatdown deck with a few fight effects. So we've got goblins. Next turn maybe axe plus equip. Word beat town in more than one sense of the word. Beetlebank's a good one. Ooh. Change of plan. What's going on here? Alright, the flame. Thanks with all. Hmm, not a huge fan of what's going on here. They might have a burn bright. So let's say I don't block the burn bright. I'm taking 10 plus another 8, 18, so it would be dead. So I probably block a 2 1. They burn bright. And I'm not dead. Because if I block a, a chi for a shortcutter, they're not forced to use it. Is a problem. Although I might still be in trouble. So 
So now I can stag fight the chief. Probably my best bet. And we'll try and gain some life back with uh, Truffle Snouts. Get out of burn range. Can I afford to attack? It's not a great attack into the Ornery Goblin is a problem. But you know what, if they trade Ornery Goblin for Stag, I'll maybe just play the Mauler so it picks up a counter. And if they take it, then Truffle Snout plus Elk should be fine. More tokens. They're not great on defense, but they're pretty scary on offense, thanks to the enchantment. Another axe. Yeah, we'll still send a stag, I think. Sabertooth Mauler is not being too threatening with that enter the battlefield sound. Need to work on that. Uh oh. Well, could use a fight spell right about now. Do I have to sack my uh, elk in case I draw Indric? I think I do. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to cast it. Just a land. All right, I guess we lose. Yeah, no way I'm beating Cranko. I guess I pass. Not that I'm bored. Thanks to the Mauler. But if I don't find removal for Krenko soon, it's gonna take over the game. Ginger Brutes. Interesting. So close to being lethal too. So if I play the Brutes, equip it twice, can hit him for five. Do I survive the following turn is a question. I've got two blockers. And I'm taking six exactly if they attack with Grenko. But I guess they're forced to jump which will untap the Mauler. So I think I'm actually okay.
because he'll lose one goblin to the molar attack. Yeah, the shoat can also attack because it also forces a trade. So I can attack with all. I have to block with two goblins, I get to untie Mauler and I get a 3-3 three, three token. Still a very close game, opponent could easily top deck and answer. Alright, I'm blocking. Burn bright, okay. I'm at two. Wow, what a close game. Double predatory with the top deck ginger brute beats Cranko out of what I assume is double goblins if they had double burn bright. Sweet. Alright, that was a fun game. Do another vampires. Pretty fun. Spooky vampires, spellcasting vampires, or predatory vampires. Chat can decide. Don't think I have a strong preference. Spooky. Alright. And the rares are Languish, Sangromancer, and Exquisite Blood. So the vampire pack is the same. And a spooky pack had the uh, languish in it. And we do have a decent amount of synergy. Couple zombies and vampires teaming up. And an ogre slumlord. Nice. So the spooky pack with slumlord and languish. Pretty good value. I don't think I had a full playset. Good a keeper. I'll keep the last gasp in hand. The hawk will be annoying, but they might have more threatening creatures we need to deal with. So, reanimator and feathered friends. Ooh, Vessel can turn into a 5-5 flyer with a Necromancer, so might have to kill that here. Guess I'm discarding the sewer since 
not close to casting it. And then... Do I move the scythe? Yeah, maybe. If they do start attacking with Mire Triton, I don't mind trading for Lurker. Although, obviously, we want to get Slumlord in play first. Discards Enforcer. A little surprising, since it would have been decent on this board, so their hand must be quite good. I should probably take it and wait on trading until the Slumlord's in play. And then maybe put Scythe on Slumlord in case they kill it. So I still get a bit of value. Not quite sure on that one. Because then... Trading for Triton is not as good value, but I guess it's probably still good enough. So this is better insurance. And then we can start draining them out with Neonate eventually. Cadaver Imp can get back the Necromancer. Yep, and that can get back the Archfiend's Vessel, which turns into a 5-5. So it's pretty convoluted, but our opponent will end up with a 5-5 Demon at some point. I'll trade. Don't know if I should keep land in hand for any reason. Maybe one rat could have attacked. Now my Imp does trade for the 5-5 Demon eventually. That's pretty nice. Should maybe do this now. Still happy with the Scythe on the Slumlord. For now. I mean, the Slumlord's still the most valuable creature on the battlefield, so I'm okay keeping the Scythe on Ogre. Next turn, if I have more mana, I can start moving the Scythe around more onto my attacker and move it back to the Ogre afterwards. Now putting it on the Imp makes more sense, because that's kind of the creature holding off the Demon. So Scythe moves to Rats. Do I want to attack with the Vampire? Can grow up to a 5-5. Five five. So would basically trade with either Crypt Lurker or Falconer Adapt if they double block. But that would also give me a bunch of Rats. Nah, I think I'll wait on the Vampire attack. I'll send in some Rats. Activate this now. And pass a turn. Well, 
Well, I'm still at 16, so if they're attacking with everyone, I can probably afford to block the Hawk. Although they could have some sort of combo trick here, giving plus two plus two. In which case, I maybe still want to block the Demon. Yeah. Let's play it safe. Yep, that's the trick I was talking about. Well, that was pretty good value. Our opponent discarded the rice again, we discarded the swamp. Wow, languish. Languish seems amazing here. Can probably start by attacking with the rats. I have seven mana total, so four for Languish. I can move the scythe around multiple times or I can activate Neonates. And then I can end up with the scythe on the Slumlord so it doesn't die. Yeah, I think we just attack with all the rats. Presumably they just take it all. That was pretty satisfying. And an Archangel. Maybe we'll make a five color deck. All right, so that's gonna be it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.